Welcome to the channel folks, Clunkers and Classics. This will be part seven of restoring this 1978 Dodge Aspen RT. Uh, last episode we repaired this quarter panel and replaced about a half of this one over here. And we just kind of roughed it in in primer for now since we got a lot of dents above that body work that's I'll do later so this episode is mainly going to be focused on replacing the floors I know I went over it in the other videos but here's the passenger side pretty bad the only thing I don't like is it goes up into the up into this panel here so it's going to be a little bit tricky get in that area and it goes down into the seat area here that's a seat brace there whereas the other side doesn't I'll go there and show you that one uh, the rear the rear panel and then the back underneath the seat that's all good on this side I'll have to take this seat back out here in a minute, but this is the rear panel here that we're going to replace that and then the drivers See this is some really not as bad as the passenger side because it just go the rust just goes up to here So I can splice it in you know a couple inches past there and then it doesn't go up into the what They call it, the toe panel it goes right up to that line there so I can just cut that because that's that's actually where it seams together I think there's probably a brace under there if I can yeah it's like a where the two metal meets so what we're gonna do is just cut it cut it along here the edge and just replace what's needed because like I said in the other video nobody makes new parts for this can't make they don't make new floors or quarter panels or anything so we're luckily I have a parts car and that's what we're gonna do we're gonna cut them out of the parts car although it's a four-door should be the same but if not we're gonna make it work okay we'll go over the parts car here in a second uh, if you don't know already this is a 364 barrel I bought a sticker but it was for the bigger air cleaner lid the full lid which I have this fits the sticker but this one I used off the Fifth Avenue because I wanted it to be more open so I stuck it on there anyway but I know it doesn't look very good but I got that uh, the other thing we might do so I said I'm going to change this bumper over because it's all rusted. I don't know what happened to it. Now I have two bumpers. And the one off the green parts car, which I use this fender from, is a 76. So it's got the little turn signal lenses in the bumper. And I thought about it, I might just use that. and Because uh, that way I have the option of using either grill. 76, 77 grill or the 78 nup grill which has the marker signal lenses inside the grill I don't have I don't have either ones that's any good and as uh, looking on eBay the other day there's two grills on there one guy wants two grand the other guy wants 19.99.95 for it idiots there's no way you pay who the hell is gonna pay two grand for a grill so here's the parts car uh, see it's got the signal lenses and I wanted these bumper guards off this bumper anyway you know because the one on that RT it's got the, the uh, bumper strip so it's made a little bit different I can't I can't use some bumper guards and this one is without a strip so 
funny I thought about using that that way I got an option see this grills busted but I could probably just stick it on there for now uh, then if I do get a newer grill and lights I could either use the grill lights or the bumper lights for you know something else some fog lights halogen lights or something as you can see this this one here see when it's got the lenses inside the grill and this grill's in shape and I only have one of these I have this this lens here I don't know what happened to this one and see that bumper's really good but it's got no bumper guards or strip on it so I could take that bumper and the bumper guards off this one and swap all that or just leave this bumper on this car because uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this one yet. I may, I don't think I'm going to get around to restoring it. And I'm probably going to use a bunch of the red interior pieces. And I may put it up for sale. If any of you guys are interested, I'm not going to sell it cheap. Because, uh, so this is the four-door here. I'm going around. This is where I, I use the fender on that side. And this is the quarter panel here, which I cut off with the other one and this is the one we're gonna cut the floors out of I still gotta pull these these seats aren't bolted in I'm gonna have to pull them out but the floors are really good there's just a little bit of surface rust but they're very solid so Uh, all that can be pour 15 scuffed down and pour 15 it, but I'm gonna weld it in first So we're probably gonna start with the passenger side uh, Do the passenger side first and then we'll go to the driver's side Do it one panel at a time uh, I don't think that door Something's up with this door. I don't know what it is Anyway, we get them seats out and the doors opened and uh, start cutting. So anyway, that's what we'll end, we'll end up doing in this video. If I got extra time on it, I'll uh, we'll swap some other stuff like that bumper. Okay, so I'll be back in a little while with an update. Okay guys, I got all the floor cut out. I'll probably trim some more uh, I haven't got the ones out of the green one cut out so I'm not exactly sure how much I'm putting in there so I may trim some a little bit more of them and I noticed I've, I've had a transmission leak and I think I can see where it's coming from here is right where that transmission linkage goes in because I've cleaned that up a few times and it's just gotten wet and starts stripping might be easier to fix that uh, while I got the floor out I'm not sure what's I've never had a Chrysler apart it's, I'm sure it's just a little o-ring or something in there but anyway this is the driver's side it's not too bad up here and I'll show you the passenger here in a little bit and this is kind of weird little thing here for the I'm gonna have to work around that somehow but what I'm gonna do all the braces are in really good shape and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour 15 all on the inside right now and like I said I may trim that a little bit more I'm just going to cut out as much as I can on that green one, but geez, I don't know about getting all these spot welds out of the green one. Uh, I don't like to drill 100 million holes. But I may have to. Okay, so here's the passenger side. It was a little tricky because I had them gas lines right there. There's some new gas lines I put on. But you can see up here, this panel here, pretty soft, and it's got a couple holes in it. 
but uh, that goes up. Uh, that's like part of the firewall. And then it goes into this piece here. And I'm not going to get into cutting all that out. So I may just put a piece of metal over top of it and come down enough to weld that floor in here. I don't know. I'll figure it out once I once I get the ones out of the green one out. Okay. So yeah, like I said, all the braces. Chrysler's got some good braces. These aren't like Chevy's. This is a big I guess a transmission brace too. Pretty heavy duty. But uh anyway I'm gonna pour 15 that and uh, cut the green ones out tomorrow because it's supposed to storm hell of a storm tonight try to get that poor 15 on before it gets wet and then all week but every day 20 to 40 percent chance of rain so it's going to be hit and miss i know i should clear up my garage there and stick it inside there but i just if i'm in the garage I'm going to have to use a spotlight and everything and it's just so much easier working on a car outside because you got the sunlight and lots of room. You got the wind blowing, blowing the dust and shit away. But, uh, you know, I work outside 99% of the time because it's always nice. All this rain the last couple of weeks, I don't know where it's coming from. So, uh, yeah, here's the shit pile here rusty crap. I'll just save that for the little plugs and everything. Okay, well I'll give an update tomorrow and I will see you next segment. Okay, I got the rear, left rear section cut out of the green car. Here's the panel here. It's got a little bit of surface rust, but it's pretty solid. Let's see underneath. Of course, I'm going to pour 15 all that. Uh, oh, so I pour 15 to all this, uh, most of the stuff that I'm not replacing. Floor there. Uh, and inside the frame rails. Look here. Pour 15 to all that. It rained again last night, so there's a little bit of surface rust here where I grinded for to weld the new one on. So anyway, here's the back piece here. That's where that big hole was right here. And cut all that out. And then, now the four-door piece was a lot longer. Uh, luckily, it's the same width. So she just fits right in there. I just got a little spot here that I cut. It's got that brace there that was a bitch. See, and this is what I hate about trying to drill out spot welds. Uh, you drill it out, but then something hangs there, and you try to chisel it out, and it just screws up. That's what I'm worried about on these big front pieces here where uh, they're all spot welded here, I'm trying to get them out. I mean, you can you drill it, but they're not just going to pop off. If you were putting a new one on, you wouldn't care. You'd take the old one and just rip it off, chisel it, and throw it away. But trying to cut a used one off and reuse it, uh, it's going to be a real pain. So that's what I'm fixing to do next. This one, there was only the two welds there. Then I had to, there's two welds here, but I had to cut around that because, uh, Got that big brace in there anyway it's a little bit different here uh, so I'm just gonna tack it down at those areas just see this one this floor pan comes in and then it has a little lip here and this one doesn't because it's a lot longer it's about this long so anyway, I'm going to leave that on there so it'll kind of look factory from the bottom. And then I'm going to weld all that in there around the edges. 
and then what I'll do is I'll get up underneath of it uh, and hammer these little edges like this towards the floor and tack it in through the bottom too just tack it around there and then seam seal above it and below it and then paint it and undercoat it so anyway just thought I'd show you that got that used piece pretty nice uh, you can watch this thing this transmission linkage here and you can just see it dripping every and see all the dripping every few seconds I'd ask y'all how to fix that but the video will come out too late I'm gonna I think I'm gonna have to fix that before I put in this floor because if you got the floor in there you don't got very much room to work at at all so I don't know I'm gonna have to look it up hopefully it's just a little o-ring or something but she's really dripping anyway I'll probably do the uh, passenger side first leave this to last research this a little bit and replace that whatever's leaking I'm pretty sure it's this transmission line or something here but it's dripping in here filling up there and then dripping down right in here so anyway uh, yeah this okay so I got that piece done fixing to do the passenger side like I said on the passenger side uh, it's gonna be a little bit tricky with this I'm just gonna have to I'm probably just gonna put a piece of metal over top of there and then weld that piece of metal into this brace here and make a lip on it make a lip here and then cut out the other floor pan so it can it can weld to a lip like it's supposed to and then come across and after that it should be a piece of cake but like I said drilling these out it's gonna be a uh, anyway I'll figure it out and I'll be back later with an update okay guys uh, getting these floors ready to cut out and uh, even though the doors were all closed all the water's getting in from somewhere and I got some rust rust holes right here Other than that, it looks okay. The uh, driver's side, I think I can live with. It looks pretty damn good. Other than the emergency brake cable mounts in a different spot, but that's okay. Uh, my only other option is to cut these floors out of this 87 Fifth Avenue right here. Uh, I got a guy that's been taking parts off of this a bunch of different times he's been over so I don't know if this is a F body 2 or what uh, they kind of look the same I'm gonna have to I guess measure and see so I may just cut the floors out of this one at least the passenger side and he's rubbed all the dash and everything off of it so I can kind of see where I don't know where the water unless the water's coming in through these type of areas here on mine I'm sure mine's leaking on both sides too this one's definitely well because the stuff is missing but the all the uh, caulking and everything is outlasts its uh, lifespan so I'll take some measurements on this one. It looks like I'm going to have to cut this one out. A lot better shape. As long as it fits, I think it'll be all right. But I think probably, I don't know. I'll have to see where the seat mounts and all that stuff. But anyway, just thought I'd show you that. I'll be back with another update later. Okay, guys. I wanted to show you uh, 
this 80, 87 Fifth Avenue, how mint it is under here. Uh, it's been a Texas car its whole life, been a daily driver up until a few years ago. And look at, there's just no rust or what or nothing in here. So I just wanted to show you all that. You know, we're southern guys down here aren't used to uh, fixing rust. But I'm originally from, grew up in Canada, so I know uh, I've done it before when I, in my younger days. So I think I'm going to cut out the, pa the uh, driver's side from this car also. Even though the one in the green car is okay, but this one's just, just really nice. And it fit perfect in the Aspen. I, I didn't know whether it would or not. I mean, eyeballing it, it looked, looked the same, but we'll go, we'll go over to the car and I'll show you. It's, it uh, pretty much exactly the same. It's kind of weird that they don't make uh, floorboards for these cars because it looks like it interchanges with a lot of years and models. Unless I didn't look hard enough, I don't know. Okay, so here's back at the Aspen RT. And uh, like I said before, I don't think I'm going to cut out all the structure stuff. So I got, got them in three pieces here. There's the first piece. See how mint that is. Just no rust on the back or nothing. Okay, so I'm just going to put that over the top. Something like that. It's got the same curves and everything in it. Well, I had it on there before. Okay. Something like that. And then this is the main panel. You can see here, there's just no rust or nothing on it. And you can see all the friggin' holes. Holes I had to drill to get that thing off. So anyway, that goes up like that. And then I cut it. Let's stick that there for now. And then I cut it a little bit too short, but I got this little piece here. And we're going to put that in there. Like that. And then when this is in there, I'm just going to, I got a little strip of metal. I don't know if I'll use this one or another one. It'll be something like that. And tie that together. And uh, weld it all in there. And uh, yeah, all the holes line up on the frame and everything. So it's identical. Made, made the same. So anyway, I'm going to get all this welded in. I'm going to get this uh, left rear one welded in. And then I'll be back. We'll go from there. Uh, like I said, I'll fix that transmission leak first before I do the uh, driver's side. So anyway, I'll be back. Okay, guys, I got the uh, passenger floor in. It's not very pretty, but nobody's going to see it. It's just a floor, solid as a rock. I had to uh, weld this piece onto this main piece, a little piece here. Uh, this piece up here, I just put some screws in it because I didn't want to take a chance of welding to that weak metal behind it. But uh, there's pour 15 on it, and the back of this is good, so it ain't ever going to rust out again or anything. So, of course, it had that, that brace that's in here. So that's what this little piece of metal is. It's all screwed to that brace. And then I just weld, just put some spot welds along here. So it's, it's strong, as strong as can be. Okay, so that's it for the passenger floor. Just need to prime it and uh, seam seal it. And then this is the little back piece here. Same, same thing. And this one, I got to put some pour 15 on that rust there uh, uh, on top and, and under it. So I'm just fixing to prime them and then uh, 
seam seal it, and then paint it all black. I don't think it has to be undercoated underneath, uh, uh, on top. Now underneath, I'm going to get under there later, probably after I do the uh, driver's one. Put it up on some ramps, and I'm going to, whatever little lip is behind like this, uh, going to get from underneath of it and just tap it all together and then either puts a little few more little tack welds or stuff it all with seam sealer this is underneath and then undercoat it all underneath so that that'll be the bottom but we'll I'll, I'll do I'll do that in another segment after I after I get the driver's side done after I fix that transmission linkage leak but anyway I'll be back with some more updates. Okay guys, I got that little seal out. You can see the linkage there. Took all that apart. And here's the uh, little seal. Had to get a screwdriver wedged in there to get it out. Uh, AutoZone had one in in stock so here's the new one here fixing to put that in there looks to be the same uh hopefully that's what it is i don't know hopefully it's not overfilled i think it was a little bit low when i first got it started and i uh put in a quart or two i might have overfilled it but even if it was overfilled it shouldn't be leaking out of there so anyway, fixing to do that. Also bought a transmission pan gasket, filtered for it. I'll do that later. Um, I'm also going to change this front end over. There's the old bumper, and uh, as you can see, I took the old bumper stuff off. And I'm just going to use this grill up the 76. I know it's busted up, but I ain't spending uh, spending two grand on somebody's used one on eBay. So I'm just going to put this front bumper here on it. And then it has, see, it has the signals in the bumper instead of the. Uh, instead of the grill so it's basically going to have a 76 77 front end on it but uh that's all i'm going to do for now i can always switch it over later depending on what type of grill i got i got i got another 78 front bumper and uh if i find a 78 and up grill then I'll go ahead and put that on and, and the correct bumper on. But for now, it's going to be 76, 77 type. So anyway, I'll be back with an update later. Okay, guys, I got the driver's side cut out here. So there's the 5th Avenue. And of course the back. No spot a spot of rust or anything on it. Okay, uh, I got that seal fixed, and even though it was uh, a cheap little seal, it was a mother getting that thing in there. Uh, it basically has to be pressed down in there and trying to get it something to press evenly because it kept popping one way or the other to get it pressed evenly straight down. Man, I'll tell you, I had to have a, a thing here and uh, my port of power deal to push it down. And after three or four tries, I finally got it in there. And anyway, there's uh, it's dry as a bone. It's not leaking. It's been in there for over a day. It hasn't leaked or anything. Okay, so there's where the floor's going in here. Right around these edges here. I'm going to weld it in 
and uh, up here I have to do the same thing as the passenger side and get a piece of metal uh, to tie in the new piece up and up to here because you know this is a, a like a little brace thing here and then uh, this piece here and I'm not cutting all that out and everything so I'm just gonna put a piece over top of it like that and then screw and weld it all in there I don't I don't think this isn't as bad as the passenger side actually I think that's a little hole for the for the insulation so I think that'll be okay okay so uh, I'll be back after I got that welded in there okay just figure I'd give you a peek uh, before I weld it that's what it looks like and I put in these heavy-duty uh, screws all in there and I'm probably just gonna leave them in there to give it a little extra strength since I'm just using a flex core welder but anyway that's it I found the two little holes for the uh, dimmer switch had to replace that okay so I'm just fixing to weld it just figure I'll give you a look at it see what it looks like all prep ready to weld and I uh, will be back and show you the final final deal okay guys got all the floor welded in and uh, put some pour 15 over the welds I will probably uh, put some sealer around the edges once this dries real good and uh, that should be it for all the floor other than but I'm gonna have to wrap up this video it's been a week there's the passenger side I have the uh, uh, insulation from the other car that's in pretty good shape that I'm gonna put up there later and I gotta put some sealer in this little area here so I'm gonna wrap up this video about the floors for now uh, I gotta make sure because it's been raining here almost every day except for yesterday and today but uh, every morning there's a little puddle of, puddle of water in these floorboards so I gotta find out where that's coming from I think it might be around the windows uh, now like I said before nobody makes any parts for these cars but except for a couple the carpet which I can get the carpet but of course I don't want to put the carpet in there if it's still leaking water from somewhere so I'm gonna order the uh, this weather stripping here they make this so I'm gonna now tentatively this car is gonna go black so I'm gonna take them uh, weather strip out and paint all the jams black and then put in new weather stripping and then make sure it doesn't leak so as long as there's no water coming in on these floors then I can put carpet but for next video I'm gonna start on the interior now this back deck right here you can see the cardboard actually looks in pretty good shape of course that back trim piece uh, well I'm gonna have to go over in the other car I got the other car parts car plus a bunch of other parts uh, like I said before I think this interior is gonna go all red so I got all these red extra pieces so whatever parts that need to be painted I'm gonna paint them like for them trim pieces so I'm gonna get at least on the next video I'm gonna recover this cardboard and some uh, probably black vinyl and then get all this trim in the back 
and I got a red back seat get that put in get everything ready for the carpet and then we will take off this top part of the dash and recover it and then mount that back in there later on we're going to put in a windshield I'm not sure if we'll get that next video I haven't checked if they make uh, new new windshields I think they do some guy online so you could get it but we're going to get all this tr red trim put in uh weather stripping uh I've got it halfway done, but I'll save that for next video. We're going to change the whole front end over. We're going to put that 7677 bumper and grill on there, and most likely the hood. Okay. Um, I got the rear spoiler in from uh, the Great White North. It came in, and he said in the description that it... Uh, uh, needed final prep and it does we'll go over that next video and mount it it doesn't come with any hardware so and I will have to scrape off the stripe and paint under where that spoiler goes on so we're going to do that next video uh, the rear bumper we're putting that rear bumper back on with the with the rubber trim around it and I've got all that painted black around where the taillights go and underneath and everything uh, we're going to uh, put in the taillights and so it'll have the lights in the front and the signals in the and the uh, or, or taillights in the back signals in the front and everything and we're getting all the lighting working make sure all the lights high beams the signals brake lights all that stuff working next video too so anyway i'll wrap this up and i'm gonna have to move this car out and clean up all that transmission fluid that was leaking i think we got that leak fixed i'll pull this car back and uh power wash all that transmission fluid and crap and I'm going to bring this thing back up on ramps and we'll get underneath there and button up the bottom of the floor uh, like I said you know around these edges here where I welded there'll be a little lip underneath and we're just going to tap that up around around the bottom and probably put some sealer in there and then undercoat it just so it looks good from the bottom and seals it up from any water or anything getting in there so we'll do that next video because it'll, it'll take a little little while to clean everything up and get it up on ramps and we will uh i got the filter and the gasket for the transmission we'll get under there and uh, change the the uh transmission fluid and all that too so yeah a lot of work uh i'll just these videos are seeming like they're about once a week what i can get done in a week although it's it's been raining a lot so i can't get a lot done but it should start going faster so anyway yeah do me a favor subscribe uh the bottom right uh corner of the screen and a little subscribe button just click that subscribe and uh, like comment share hit the notification button and come along with me for the ride on uh on restoring this car uh i don't know exactly how long it's going to take or anything but these floors i did save a lot of money like i said they don't make floors for these but uh if I did have to buy them, who knows what they would have cost? Four, five, six hundred bucks. So it saved a lot of money. It's uh, definitely advantageous to have a parts car. And luckily I got two of them. Well, really three if you count the other RT. But the other RT, I'm not sure. I may, when I'm completely done with that, I may, I may try to sell it whole. So if anybody's interested, 
Uh, I probably have to rub some red interior pieces, but uh, pretty much got all the parts for that car. You know, whatever I rob from it, I can replace with the white parts from this one, interior. So, so anyway, it's not costing me a lot. Oh, the other thing is I, I did buy speakers uh, for the rear deck. The little Wally Mark Specials, 6x9. So, uh, I will be mounting them in the back and then running the wires up before I put in all the carpet and everything run the wire even though I only have this factory little AM FM mono radio I'm gonna run the wires up there and and later on down the road I'm, I may put in another stereo I've got you know I've got a, ha a little mini junkyard here so I, I know I got a whole bunch of st CD stereos and everything and then I bought that Fifth Avenue had some, I don't think they were a factory, they had some little, uh, I don't know what they were, two or three inch little speakers up front on the dash. I bought some four inch. So once we get this dash out of here, we'll see if the four inch ones will fit. If they don't, uh, may try to put them in the kick panels or something and then have them wired up for a stereo too. So we'll probably do that next video too, because I got to do them speakers. Uh, I got to do them speakers before I uh, finish that deck out. So that's why I bought them. Okay, we got all our quarter panels done. Uh, okay, so thanks everybody for watching, coming along this journey with me, and. Uh, we will see you all next video, and we'll talk to you later.